My name is Carrie Regan, and I was the associate producer for the Explorer team that went in search of the Afghan girl. She was the subject of one of the most iconic National Geographic covers ever. Her eyes said so much. There was so much pain that they conveyed. When Steve McCurry took this photo uh, back in 1984, it was a fleeting moment, uh, and then she was gone, and he was gone. I was in a refugee camp outside of Peshawar, Pakistan. One morning, I just by chance happened to walk past uh, a school. I just wandered in, and I saw this little girl in the corner of the room with these incredible, intense eyes. I don't think I took more than five or ten frames. It uh, ended up on the cover of the National Geographic in June of 1985. And after that, we had literally thousands of people inquiring uh, how they could help her and who was she. After 9-11, when Afghanistan suddenly came back in the news, there was a renewed interest in her. People always were curious what would happen to her, where, where is she, how can we help her. So we thought it was worth trying to locate her, but we, we thought it would practically would take a miracle to, to find her. We didn't have her name, uh, we didn't know her tribe, we didn't know where she lived. I honestly didn't think we were ever going to find her. It had been 17 years. People go missing constantly in Afghanistan. What are the odds that we're going to go and find this woman when all we have is a photograph to go on? The only clue we had to actually try and find her was I had photographed her in this school and I was trying to find the teacher. We sent photographs to our fixer and he distributed them to elders in the refugee camp. We took her photograph around to literally hundreds of people in the camp. Suddenly we found ourselves in a situation where there were a lot of young Afghan women who were claiming to be the Afghan girl. And a lot of them claimed to remember me and remember the photograph, and it just simply wasn't the case. We looked at all the different technologies that could be used to positively identify a person. We had a gentleman who would take sketches of children and he would age them. We also used an iris scan recognition company. We simply had to find the right, identify the right, right, you know, woman who was the Afghan girl. When the crew first arrived and they were showing the photo around, there were a couple guys who said, you know, we know this girl. She was in the tent next to us. After a couple weeks of, of looking for her, suddenly we just got lucky and one man claimed to know her brother. And, you know, I thought, oh, this is just, you know, a boondoggle, this is going to be another false lead. But her brother showed up, and her brother had the same bright eyes that she did. We got a phone call and said, we have her. We're going to bring her to the village elder's home. The woman can go in and meet her. I was the only woman on the crew. And so I walked into this room, and I saw her sitting in the back, and she had her head covered with a black scarf. I had the, the photograph in my hand, the original photo. I was looking at it and looking at her face, looking at the moles, and I looked at the flecks in her eyes, and they all lined up. For the first time, I thought, oh my god, I think we've actually found her. I think this could be the Afghan girl. And finally, this anonymous girl who'd been an icon um, for so long has a name, Sharbat Gula. Be able to produce a program that moved people, that moved people to come together and donate money over a million dollars to help build schools for young girls in Afghanistan. It, it really was the pinnacle of my career with National Geographic Explorer.